Liberty Nation. Truth is making a comeback. Hi, Lisa K. Donner here, and today we're talking about dying of whiteness. Those on the left seem to have an endless fascination with skin color these days, and you know, this continual parsing of people according to their race has one psychologist and sociologist telling folks on network TV that being white essentially amounts to a terminal illness. Jonathan Metzl went on NBC recently to extrapolate on his book, quote, Dying of Whiteness, How Politics and Racial Resentment is Killing America's Heartland. And to prove his point, Metzl points to the uptick in suicide among white males. Joining me now from Norway is Liberty Nation's international correspondent, Onar Om. Onar wrote an article about this called Whiteness, a Terminal Illness. Hi, Onar. Hi there. Uh, If you could distill Mr. Metzl's uh, premise for us. He says, basically, based on on statistics, uh, that whiteness is killing white Americans. This is based on the idea that since 2015, in the years 2015, 16, and 17, life expectancy in America started falling, and it started falling especially among uh, whites and especially among white males. So his idea is that whiteness is uh, killing people, and he has certain ideas of why that is. Um, He thinks that it is Republican or conservative politics, like uh, uh, it's the states that want to have tax cuts that were against Obamacare and that uh, want to have liberal gun laws that uh, are are having people dying. So his uh, his claim is basically that uh, Trumpian policies or conservative politics is, is killing people, especially whites. Hasn't there always been a presumption, at least in modern times, that wealthy people live longer than those who are poor simply uh, because of their lifestyle and their access uh, rather than their access to health care? I mean, I don't see a lot of people uh, from the projects buying organic veggies at Whole Foods in the U.S. True, but uh, uh, Mr. Metzl is a, a psychologist and he thinks that the roots of this problem is more uh, due to psychological issues. So uh, one of the issues is that he thinks that the the increased amount of immigration has made whites very nervous and this increased uh, nervousness makes them uh, less healthy and they will die sooner. And most of the, the increase in death is due to suicide, not due to lifestyle changes. There's some uh, substance abuse, but most of it is actually suicide. Um, so it, it is more of a psychological issue than of uh, like eating the the right vegetables or something like that. Right. So you you also cite a situation in Singapore. Can you extrapolate on that a little bit? Well, uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, he claims that uh, um, the healthcare system is important for how long you live. That's simply not true. If you take a correlation across the world uh, on how much people, uh, how much each country spends on, on doctors, on midwives, on on medicines, and so forth, there's almost no correlation between uh, how long people live and, and and how much money is spent on on healthcare. So after about one thousand dollars per capita, there's zero correlation. And to illustrate that, Singapore spends one quarter of what America spends per capita on healthcare, but they live several years longer. It's the healthiest nation in the world. What about, say, in Britain, where there's a socialized medicine? What's the situation there? Well, we've had seen a similar uh, uh, fall in life expectancy or a flattening in expectancy among especially white males uh, in the same years since about 2015 and 16 and 17. And they already have universal health care. So clearly, the lack of Obamacare can't be the explanation for why uh, people are killing themselves in in red states, especially in red states in America. All right, then then he moves on to the issue of gun ownership, which seems rather far-fetched. What's his point about guns? 
Well, he, he makes the, uh, a, a fairly reasonable claim that if guns are more available, uh, you if someone it becomes in a suicidal mode, they might leap to the uh, uh, getting a gun which is highly available. And unlike pills or, or something like that, guns actually do manage to uh, to kill you most of the time if you're actually using it as a method for killing yourself. So he's arguing that liberal gun laws is making it easier for people to kill themselves. The only problem with that, and, and he shows that, that there is a correlation between uh, gun ownership uh, in a state and, and the suicide rate. The problem is that if that was true, you would should, you should be able to see the opposite correlation for non-gun related suicides. In other words, uh, in the same areas where you have lots of guns, uh, that are killing people, you should see fewer suicides in other methods, but you don't. You, uh, according to a study from 2002, um, this uh, does not happen. So it, it seems like he's got the causation the wrong way around. It's not the guns that are causing uh, red uh, uh, suicide rates. It's something about the red states some, uh, that is causing people to kill themselves and they just happen to own guns. Right. Well, people also jump off bridges. That doesn't mean we can get rid of all bridges, but they are, uh, you know, digress. Anyway, is it is it possible that progressive politics are killing more men in general, no matter their race? You know, as the mother of two sons, I speak with a lot of other mothers, and we all have kind of the same worry that our boys are growing up in a rather antagonistic male environment. Well, that is uh, actually an interesting thing that he doesn't conclude with. He he does conclude that whiteness is killing people, but he should equally well have been able to conclude that, that uh, progressive policies are killing people. And as you say, the, the notion of toxic masculinity has been going around like it, it's it's okay to bully people for being male and uh, males today increasingly see themselves in an environment where they are the losers in all fields of academia according to professor gad sad uh, from canada uh, women are doing better in every group measured so in, when you have postdocs we have uh, phds and any kind of uh, categories in any field more women are uh, uh, performing in these areas than men are doing. And if you uh, if you look in just ordinary school, uh, then uh, boys are uh, doing much worse than than girls and they are being medicated for it. They they're getting ADHD uh, medicine for uh, to keep them quiet or calm, which is basically saying that they're medicated for not being very good girls. Uh, so men are treated as uh, some kind of diseased human and many mm -hmm. men are, 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 are feeling this to the core that they're not being valued. They're losing their status, not just as, as uh, individual, but as providers and as someone who has, like before uh, you could go to war and you can come home as a, a war hero and be treated with respect. Mm -hmm. Men uh, probably, or it seems, feel to a greater extent that they're not just being valued. They're they're viewed as uh, the pariah of society, and someone are, are just they want to get rid of them, and this might affect suicide rates. Yeah, we will make the caveat that uh, both boys and girls, uh, there are incidences of ADHD where they do need. Uh, medicine but but I think you're right sometimes uh, boys are more likely to get uh, medicated for their quote aggressive behavior when they're maybe just boys being boys oh what final conclusions did you come to my conclusion is that this is more uh, of a political hack than a real thesis by this uh, 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 soci sociologist. He has a PhD in racial studies and is, uh, from basically he is a postmodernist and uh, that is the lowest quality kind of ac uh, academia uh, or academic work you can find in academia and uh, so I, I would say that if even rudimentary uh, checkup of his work shows that he he's he's just not seeing things properly as a proper researcher. 
So it's, it's very bad work. Yeah, he's not expanding his research to include all sorts of. Yeah, he's leaving out a lot. Let's just put it that way. That's right. He, if he'd just done international studies, all his correlations would disappear. Yeah. Well, that's Onar Am, international correspondent for LibertyNation.com. If you enjoyed this video, we have many more. So please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit our site, LibertyNation.com, where truth is making a comeback. I'm Lisa K. Donner, editor-in-chief. Thanks so much for joining us today.